on today's episode of the NES Pursuit. But uh, yeah, that's uh, sealed, never opened. Riff and Ricky get the opportunity to dive deep and dig into a sea of endless boxes that are filled to the brim with retro wonders. So this is all for sale. Everything, everything's for sale. Everything. And, yeah, everything, man. And whatever you see is for sale. And uh, the original retro boys come across things that only exist in this very room. That uh, is very rare and currently a one of one. Riff gets into some drama with a Sega Genesis deal that could go sour if he doesn't act fast. Three days go by, I've been ghosted. Prepare for the longest, most in-depth episode of the NES Pursuit in history. Oh no, wait, let's see. Riff! Oh no! You see this? There goes my money! We're gonna go hunting in a guy's garage unit. Basically, he has a whole entire unit of something full of all his stuff on eBay. So Riff sent me a video and apparently we're gonna go dig, dig, dig through some cool stuff. The other day I got a message from Mort saying, a friend of mine named Ryan has an eBay store online where he sells a ton of stuff. Here is, here's Ryan. What's up? And he says, Ryan's moving, and he doesn't want to take everything with him. Um, he is moving soon, but he has a lot of stuff out on eBay. Here's like almost every N64 game. So he sends me a video saying everything that you see that's in this garage, games, toys, collectibles, posters, movies, nostalgia, everything. It's toys, games. Is up for sale. It's up for grabs. So Ricky and I get to go there. Here's some stuff they're selling. All of this is going to eBay or is already on eBay. I talked to him last night and he's like, hey, my stuff is priced fair and I'm not here to make a bunch of money off you guys. Let's have some fun, let's look at some games and apparently, he's just wanted to get rid of because he's moving. I'm pretty excited. So you need to come over and uh, film an episode in the garage. So we're gonna buy it for a dollar. Dang, you have good lighting right now and you grow straight up. I got natural light and I got white light or whatever that is. A pretty great place to do a formal NES pursuit in. He's a reasonable seller. With reasonable prices. So I'm gonna make reasonable offers. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, we gotta get some money now. Cause I don't know what we're gonna find and honestly, I don't wanna be shorthanded if I get there. That's the worst thing. Cause then I know I don't, I'm not gonna be able to borrow anything from Riff cause he knows what he's getting. Punisher on the Genesis is the cool, one of the coolest beat em ups ever. It's probably my top two, because it's that good. That up there with Final Fight. So we get here, and I have to admit, we're a little early, a few minutes early, and I can already see, I'm kind of peeking over. We're like, which house is it? But his garage. All right, we just got to the guy's house. We're waiting outside for Mort. Mort is the one who hooked this up for us, kind of got us connected to do this. There's so much stuff in there. We're gonna go in there, Mort's gonna hold the camera. He was gracious enough to do so. And not gonna lie, we drove by the garage and Ricky and I both were like, like we wanted to get out because we saw a lot of goodies, toys and knickknacks and posters and weird things. So it's time to dig. If your name is Doug, you'd be Dig Doug. It's the kind of stuff we like. It's one of those exciting times. We purposely haven't walked in or said hi yet. Good to see you. Good to see you. Okay, you guys. All right, we're focused. You focused? Focus? All right, we're walking. What's up, man? What's up, man? How are you? Nice to meet you, Aaron. Nice to meet you. I'm a hugger, so. No, yeah, no worries, man. Nice to meet you. How you doing? Nice to meet you, So we walk in, and he says, "Go ahead and dig." So this is all for sale. Everything, everything's for sale. Everything. And yeah, everything, man. Hi, I'm Ryan. Uh, I run Eclectics Collectibles here in Orange County, California, and I collect 
pretty much everything. So come on, come on, hit us up on Instagram or eBay and say hi. And whatever you see is for sale. And uh, man, we walk in here, and as soon as he said we have free reign to just pretty much dig through anything and everything, and look, we're allowed to like. Oh yeah, dig. Go through okay. everything you want. All right, as they say, here it goes. That's when the excitement kicks in because. Everything's kind of in closed boxes. It's no, nothing is like open and set where we kind of know where we're going. And when we see closed boxes and just like nothing but just toys and whatever you want to do, those statues, toys, everything. Oh, wow. Make me an offer as long as it's something. Uh, Whole you know, garage, reasonable. 100 bucks. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> we get excited. There's just so much to go through. It's, it's awesome. Everything's like, okay, we kind of got to pull ourselves together. Are we going to run around together? Are we going to go crazy? Or are we going to kind of break through these boxes one by one together? Uh, Ricky, where are we starting here? Oh, okay. We started out with a plan and the plan kind of fell apart and we just started digging. I guess, uh, Ricky, I like, kind of want to jump in front of you, but not. Go ahead. Where are you going? I'll follow you. Where, no. I, I... And boy, there is nothing like a good dig. I mean, everything's here. Would you have traded your friendship with me for everything in there? Nah. Liar. No. For Genesis speakers? Possibly. <laughs> Don't want to talk about the future. Don't want to talk about the things I've done. I got nothing more to say. Stop trying so hard to win my face. You like to hang Hey, 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 hey. Is this too close? No, that's actually how I like to be filmed. Dude, <laughs> this way. To the side, come on, step away. You would pay, you can't go. Got a lot of Xbox 360 stuff in here. Uh, NES Advantage, a bunch of controllers. Right when I get there, one of the first things I see as I start to poke around, just laying on this table, uh, I just saw these out of the corner of my eye. I love VHS stuff. Uh, this is a He-Man and the Masters of the Universe. It's two VHS tapes, but these are two wonderful VHS tapes. The first thing is a sealed he-Man, The Courage of Adam VHS. I'm not super excited about, but I am excited to have it and to see it. So I'm like, I gotta get this, I gotta dive into this. And a Midway, the arcade game WrestleMania. Is this like a, what I was really, really excited about was, which I've never seen, this WrestleMania, the video game, the arcade game, VHS sealed promo VHS tape. Hi everybody, I'm Todd Pettengill presenting you another great video strategy guide from the World Wrestling Federation, Coliseum Video, and Acclaim. Now I have played tons of great video games, but this is in a class all by itself. The action and excitement are second like a, to none. I'm guessing some sort of promo guide, a promo on how to play yeah, it. Yeah, exactly what it is. I have a bunch of these type of things. I collect a lot of stuff like this. I know I collect a lot of VHS stuff, but when it comes to promos, that's where I've really been sinking a lot of my time and energy. If you see in my game room now, these two are definitely going my pile of how much when I bundle up at the end. <laughs> I have a ton of this stuff. I like to collect all the random game player strategy guides and walkthroughs and this, this is gonna be cool. I love this. I have so much of this type of stuff. I just recently bought two VHS TVs. I like, Dude. you know, the little VHS. Yeah. Which, by the way, people sell them for like 130 oh, bucks yeah. these days. All those older electronics are going Back in the day, this was YouTube, this was reviews. This is how you got good at things without having the modern day convenience we do of going on Google's and typing up everything. I need these in my life, especially this one, especially. Especially that one? Especially this one. That one is pretty sick. Ask me one more time. You would either play hard and if you couldn't figure it out, you gotta get one of these VHS tapes. So I got it. Especially that one, especially this one. <laughs> <laughs> Impressive? part about sticking together <laughs> and we were just going through boxes but I ran into this one box and as soon as I opened it I knew Riff would want this so I, I, I had to show it to him I'm like bro Riff you gotta come over here bro so I found this box over here and this this screams out Riff nothing but Darkwing Duck and Tailspin toys the originals, not the ones that GameStop just recently had, but these were the original ones. I was like, oh no, see this? There goes my money. Wow, these are legit awesome. 
open up the box, dude. Everything's sealed. They, they were, the little hole wasn't even punched out yet. You shouldn't have Bro. showed me this early. <laughs> My bad. They were really nice. I'm not gonna lie. They were really nice. And Riff was hoping to get some. No, I don't know what any of your prices are on stuff yet, so I feel bad even pulling it aside. So I hope he gets them. If at the end it just doesn't work out, nope. no hard feelings, no any of that. Okay. I know I got them. I know. Yeah. <laughs> I couldn't afford <laughs> Crap on a stick. <laughs> It doesn't fit, Ricky. You're on, Proto Man. That's because you're not mega enough. Not even a man either. <laughs> While digging and digging and digging, the best experience for all of this is just popping open a box and being like, I didn't even remember that was a thing, I didn't know I'd want to collect this, and you're like, but I want to get this now. Was I a kid when this came out, or was that like a mid team And for me, popping open a box, actually I think Ricky might have found it for me. Right. <laughs> right now we're just digging through like the boxes for little things, and I'm kind of throwing aside random things that I know most people wouldn't care about, but to be honest. But it was two characters from a movie I loved as a kid. McDonald's Moon Guy and some of the characters from Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. People laugh, but I, a lot of people don't have nostalgia for these, and, and that's Yukon Cornelius and the Abominable Snowman from Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Who am I? The name's Yukon Cornelius, the greatest prospector in the North! Now, if you've ever seen these old claymation style cartoon movies, Christmas movies, they're really popular. A lot of people really recognize them for their old nostalgia feel. Definitely the claymation, but I genuinely have nostalgia for these. These were a big part of my childhood, so. For me, it's just such a staple in like my life. I feel like it's the first time as a kid I watched something to where I was enjoying like that Christmas spirit. They first aired in 1964 on TV as a TV special and they were sponsored by GE. And since then, they've kind of been not loved by everybody, not everybody really loves them, but for me, like a weird sense of scary. Like Nightmare Before Christmas, I knew it was scary. I knew it was coming, but this scared me in a way I wasn't expecting, and that, that cartoon. All these different claymation movies from my past of the Christmas movies, I love the art style, and I'm also obsessed with Christmas in the first place. So to mix those two things, for me to see that Abominable Snowman and Yukon Cornelius holds a special place in my heart. And it also kind of made me interested in claymation more than I thought I would be, so. He sold them to me for like two or three bucks each, so more than worth it for me. I know they go for more than that, but for me, it's not about that. That's why I make like, I make like Play-Doh sculptures of Ricky at night, and I do like weird voodoo stuff with them. Makes sense. <laughs> going through some boxes and he finds a sweet bundle, a box full of TMNT toys. There's a whole TMNT box over here. Oh, going I through this, that. we're just, we're grabbing them. Is this, what's the, how, is this like a that's bundle? My, thing? That's actually my literal childhood. My mom sent that to me about, about a year ago. So that's not happening? No, no, it's for sale. Oh, yeah. putting some on the maybe pile, putting some over here. I don't want to offend him anyway, but a dollar for everything. <laughs> what I was thinking. Sorry, Mom. We're, we're excited. Again, new into it, so I'm not like up on the prices and all that jazz, so I'm not gonna lie, we're really excited. Wow. We're just laughing, giggling together, just pulling, we're not even fighting. I think that's what I really liked about this dig. It's one of those like, uh, when Mighty Max was like big, they yeah. made all these. The mini play sets. Yeah, the mini play sets. Is it, we, Ricky and I weren't really like competing for stuff. It was just like, dude, check this, check this. So to dive through all these, this is really cool. I, I, I like the, I just like the figure, but the fact that all this stuff is on here is pretty awesome. Random Ninja Turtle figures together, just throwing stuff in the maybe pile is a fun experience. Oh, it actually still wants is pretty good. It just literally went down to the tunnel of that story. Chuck Norris? I don't know. I don't think so. No. That's oh, just... I was really excited. I was like, dude, I want this Chuck Norris. <laughs> this is his brother Norris Chuck. Random cool find for me was unexpectedly just opening a random box and seeing a bunch of little loose. 
means there could be more. Land Before Time figures. I love at least Land Before Time figures. Wow. Land Before Time. Who didn't like Land Before Time that saw it? See, I like a lot of the dumb stuff. A lot of people are like, I go for the stuff Dude, that everybody does. Petri spike. I know. If you saw it, you loved it, and it made you like dinosaurs more. It was already like, dinosaurs were peaking your interest as kids, but Land Before Time made it like, I love dinosaurs. How do I still remember these names? I don't know. <laughs> and then Jurassic Park made it next level, to be honest. I just pulled this out and was literally like, as it was coming out, I'm like, is this Chaz Michael Michaels? It is. Not many people should be able to know that, so I'm not sure if I'm proud of that or not, but I know who it is. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. You didn't say the magic word. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. I'm the last man. These guys were the best. I found the pizza. Do we need a second chance? Rummage, 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 dig, dig, dig. This whole time, that's all we're doing. It's beautiful. But dude, I used to love all this stuff. Ultimate Warrior was my jam. Brett the Hitman Heart. My jam. If you, were, if you were shoveling right now, how would you shovel? Let me see your... Yeah. Pretty good. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I thought all the... That stuff over there was Mega Man toys. All like the laundry cleaner stuff. Unfortunately not. So much cool stuff everywhere. Nostalgia. Nostalgia. He's got that silicone look. Man. That's a beautiful box. Every corner, every second. You can't help it here. It's an amazing feeling. Is this an entire Nintendo 64 call? Almost. 251 games. Wow. wow. <laughs> so, dude, one thing that, that they they have here is... And these are all boxed. Uh, everything is complete in box. Almost everything is complete in box. One of the most insane N64 collections I've seen. It's not just N64, it's boxed N64 stuff. There's boxes in that I never even knew existed. Yeah. Yeah, are these your collection? Yeah, this was my personal collection. And this is what I was trying to put together. Yeah, we're selling it. Wow. I mean, dude, there's some good stuff. There's weird, rare, obscure, you name it, it's here. Are you selling the whole thing just as like one big bundle? Uh, I would do a bundle for the right price, but most people are just looking to you know, for hole fillers, so I will. It's a close N64 collection, and it's pretty darn cool. So, well, I, Nintendo 64 was my nostalgia uh, console when I was a kid that I was most excited about and remember playing the most of. So, uh, it, when you know, I turned 30-ish, uh, I started collecting this stuff and decided I was gonna put as much of it together as I could. As for me, I don't collect N64 too much. I don't think Rift does either. We're kind of like, we're, I don't know why we don't collect N64 stuff as much. I guess N64, I just collect the necessities. And I uh, had a lot of fun putting it together, but it's time to move on to bigger and better things. But it's just it, but it's just really cool to see this because there's a lot of N64 guys that would love, love this kind of stuff. They would love to see this, they would love to own it. So one of the few titles that actually isn't for sale um, is uh, a game that I loved as a kid, Charlie Blast Territories. It's a great puzzle game. Um, and this is one of the ones that has proved to be harder over the years to get. But uh, this is one of the few ma games that I was able to play with my mom uh, as a kid. And so this one just is not leaving my collection because uh, I, you know, I'm getting rid of the turtles, so this one's staying. Are you saying your childhood is for it's sale? It's for sale. Everything's for sale. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This thing, this thing's oh, amazing. Yeah, that's a pretty special, uh, pretty special game. That's uh, Pokemon Snap in an original blister pack. The blister pack's got a little bit of damage and it's a little yellowed, but uh, yeah, that's uh, sealed, never opened uh, blister pack. Wow. That's pretty rare. Yeah, some of those games, I, dude, I never heard of them. <laughs> yeah, I was like, wait, what? I was mean? like. What? I was like, all that, right. That exists? Yeah. Do you have this? No, I'm missing the controller too. This is also makes a good uh, alternate universe Luchador mask. One of my 
favorite things that I've seen in other people's collections that I was able to see was just looking through some of his N64 stuff and you know, Ricky and I are always poking out the random weird stuff, was these 1990 McDonald's Happy Meal Super Mario Brothers 3 Happy Meal boxes. Yo, Jack, Mickey D. Okay, thanks. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Look who's popping into McDonald's. It's Mario from the new Super Mario Brothers 3 game. And when you buy a McDonald's Happy Meal, you'll get a jumping Mario. Uh, I saw these, the which is the Happy Meals. Ricky actually has the pin for that the button that came with this back in the day, I, and some other things. McDonald's is such a weird thing because nowadays when you think of McDonald's, if you're younger and you go to McDonald's, it's not really anything special. It's just another place to eat. McDonald's in the 90s, early back in the day, was almost like a staple part of childhood. It was like, for us, McDonald's was a treat back in the day. It had characters and, and fun commercials, and basically it was looked at as almost like a part of the package. When you're a kid, 90s nostalgia was like Ninja Turtles and video games and, and cartoons, and when it came to food, McDonald's was kind of that place for me as a kid. Going a Sunday with, well, eating something out of a Happy Meal was a dream come true for a kid, and you got the Super Mario Bros. 3 Happy Meal. It doesn't get better than that. So for me, when I see this Super Mario Bros. 3 McDonald's Happy Meal, for me, it's awesome because this is two things that I really loved as a kid. Are these for sale? Yeah. How much are these? A couple bucks each. <laughs> I got them, and I got them for a couple bucks each, which for me was crazy because for me in my brain, that's like something I probably would have paid like 10 bucks each box for. I've seen these a couple times, but never for sale, just kind of people had them lying around and stuff like that. So to get them both for a couple bucks, get it? I can do my leg, the arm, my chest, and my hands, and my butt. Wait. <laughs> That's, uh, that's a heck of a nose. Very nice. Right, so one thing that we ran into that I really, really like, but wasn't actually ever expecting to ever start collecting or get, I don't collect this stuff because I usually don't see this much of it, but when I see all these wrestlers here, where's these wrestling toys? But not just any wrestling toys, WWF, original, the ugly little wrestlers. Dude, they're, they're amazing. When I was a kid, me and my neighbor used to play this. I mean, they were all his because I did not have one, but my buddy next door had all of them. And I mean all of them. He's got all the ones that I used to play with. Ultimate Warrior, Undertaker. Undertaker, because Undertaker was pretty, he was pretty bomb back then, bro. He was actually scary. Nowadays, mm, I don't know. <laughs> Hulk Hogan, Ultimate Warrior, Hulk, Macho Man, Razor Ramon. So much nostalgia was brought back just looking at all those toys. I don't think I've seen that many of those old toys in one section, so when I saw them all. Dude, Dudley Brothers, dude, there's just, there's a lot of it here, and I think I'm gonna pick up a lot of it. Uh, I don't know if I should, but I am going to. I knew I had to have them. You know what else I heard in American Pickers a lot and I never realized? They started, That's and I big. knew I had to have it. Oh, yeah. They say it like every episode, and I was like, oh, Billy, you liar. I thought he created it. He didn't. Sorry, Billy. Right now, Aaron is uh, pissing me off. It, it's one of those things that, you know, when you look at it, it brings back memories. Well, this is like, this is like a 10 on bringing back memories. Not, not gonna lie. It, I can see myself at, at my buddy's house just playing this, and he even had the ring, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna look to see if maybe the ring's in here somewhere, because I, I just started put, putting a, a, a pile together, dude. It just kept growing. And it was amazing, and I love it. I'm gonna have to stop the collection because this is already a lot. I don't even know how many I picked up. I just started throwing them in. <laughs> I think I got like a nice bundle for 80 bucks. That's exactly right. I legit am so happy, and I'm, I'm, I'm gonna try to look for that original WWF ring and put them all in there. No, no! Like, what's the point of that? Oh. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> So are 
these all NES? Uh, no, it's a mix between NES, PlayStation, wow, uh, GameCube. Wow. I've seen people with graded games before, and I never really had it locked into like a good understanding of what graded games were. Uh, some water graded, but look at like this. A Color Dreams game, Captain Comic The Adventure. <gasps> but when Ryan started showing us his items and a lot of his graded games, it started to make sense to me. Is this, is this everything you have graded? Uh, yeah. Nice. Dude, what's your most prized one in here? There's like a little bit more pride that goes into it. There's a little bit more love that goes into kind of ranking your game. Like when people are like, hey, I got video games and they're in good condition. But when it's like this, it's almost like you get to put that like stamp of approval like, this is what I got, and this is this is how beautiful it is. So um, this is a water graded game, okay. and it's great. It's a perfect, oh, perfect 9.8 A plus plus. They don't really give out tens. Wow. So to see all these water games, all these games graded, was pretty cool. Not gonna lie, it did make it interesting to see a number by them. You know, like oh. That, that, that does mean they're in that good a condition. That, that's really cool. It kind of stamps in as that. And I know there's a lot of different feelings and opinions on that. Wow. wow. So yeah. as far as a grading scale goes, this is the only one that highly graded. Yes. It's crazy that to see video games that are obviously from an older generation that in this condition. Yeah, you see box stuff where you're like, that's minty. That's pretty dang clean. But when you see one like this, you're like, no, it looks like you were the creator and you manufactured this and pulled it off the press and gave it to us. I don't do it, but I think it's pretty cool. Wow, good for you, dude. That's amazing. You can technically put it in the books as the best condition Metal Gear sealed NES game out there. Don't know what it's worth, but I'd give them at least like $16.48. That's all I got. <laughs> It's a mystery to me how it all could happen. A puzzle I just can't solve. Put this mayonnaise in the sun. Tell me the cheese you want to buy. to laughing. How did I ever get in? At this point in the night, I gotta kinda go back and set in stone what I'm gonna get at the Ninja Turtle stuff. So I go back over there. So I was kinda digging through some of the the prices of what I have for the total end lot, kind of, you know, kinda gathering up a lot of stuff that I have. And I start grabbing these Ninja Turtles. And he's telling me that a lot of the ones I'm grabbing are not grabbing like the rare or expensive ones. I'm grabbing the ones that, you know, go for a little bit. They're kinda the, the more common but still desired ones. And he's telling me, he was saying a lot of the Ninja Turtle stuff, he's just selling for a couple bucks each, three to five bucks. I gotta grab a whole bunch of these. So I just grab a whole bunch, I start putting them all together, and I feel that turtle power. Um, I'm just kinda grabbing a lot of the loose figures that are not necessarily like the rare ones or anything like that. Did you know Kevin Eastman, one of the creators of the Ninja Turtles, Shredder was inspired by him as a kid literally sticking cheese graters through his arm and seeing how cool it looks in the mirror and being like, wow, that looks awesome and that's kind of where the inspiration for Shredder came from. You are here because the outside world rejects you. Ninja Turtles are just, uh, they're every 90s, 80s kids love, dude. The Ninja Turtles is just, Kind of king in that world. I always see these in some people's. I gotta buy more stuff. I grabbed some turtles too. <laughs> that's one Why? of the cooler ones. Yeah, this is one of the cooler ones. I, I feel like that's one of the one more people talk about when they talk about cool Ninja Turtle toys. I feel like that's one of the ones. Wait, I only got one? I thought I got like two. <laughs> if you watch this show a lot, to be honest, you're probably dumber. What the heck was wrong with me? I'm <laughs> falling and I can't get up. <laughs> you look like an idiot. So this is kind of, kind of my bundle so far. These he's doing for like a buck each, he said. So that's awesome because I truly love this. So it's time for me to check out and I basically give him everything and he's kind of looking over prices. You know, even though you say prices, you kind of get hooked up here and there or I throw in other things and he takes out things and we kind of do the dance of money. The, the McDonald's stuff, the VHS's, he said he would do like five bucks each, which by the way, 
people would try to sell these from online and stuff like that. VHS, people don't want them like crazy, but for people like me, when you can get stuff like this, it's definitely worth paying five bucks for. I paid way more for that for other ones on online. Basically, I got everything that I wanted for only $60. And in my mind, I was kind of thinking, you know, maybe I'll pay like 100 bucks-ish for kind of the range that I got. So far, pretty happy. Very happy. So at the end, I walked out with a ton of WWF figures. It's time to pay. What's that from, Ricky? Who knows? Uh, Who in this room? Uh, it's time to pay. It's, uh... Come on. Sunset Come. Raiders. Yes! Wow. Just for that? Well done. Just for that, you gotta put 20 towards some my stuff. Some A-Team stuff and some turtle stuff. Oh, and also, because Riff found it, this sweet Mario Kart cart. Yep. Riff oh. thought of this one. Uh, That's one of that. Mario Kart. This. I actually have some of the figures, so I'm not gonna lie, I'm pretty happy with with my, my, my digs. This A-Team car is amazing. Look at that. <laughs> Love digs like this because you never know what you're walking out with. And I felt so good. Here's that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Now that I'm not there anymore, I want to go back and just buy all the wrestlers. I, these are probably my favorite things of the lot. Go figure, it's like the cheapest thing that I paid for too. I think I got an addiction. <laughs> you know who the Game Chasers are? No. Good. I'm just kidding, they're awesome. <laughs> they're really good friends of ours. I felt so whole and so pure and it made my life better. It didn't make my life better, but it just, it made me happy. We bought stuff, we bought stuff, we bought stuff, 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 stuff. stuff. Oh, oh, oh. Wow, I really didn't know you were there. No joke, I literally texted Riff the next day. I'm like, hey, do you think he would sell all of them in a bundle? Look at this, bro. <laughs> we were just looking at these at the swamp meet. Riff and I actually, I think for two of the movies, we went the midnight showing because we were big, big Lord of the Rings guys. I'm walking out, and all of a sudden, Mort, Ricky, and Ryan start going, Riff, Riff, Riff. And I'm like, what are they, what are they, what are they, what are they doing? 10 bucks for what? For the Flintstones, cookie jar. And they basically go, look at that big thing on the table. And it's a big old giant Fred Flintstone cookie jar. From the Flintstones, I'm not joking like this big. And I'm like, I, guys, I don't need this. I really don't need this. I don't have anywhere to put this. Oh, you will. <laughs> You'll find it. I have nowhere to put this. Why would I buy this? Riff, riff. Riff. They keep chanting, they keep telling me to get it. Goes on your kitchen counter. Why am I looking at it? And I, my brain gets tricked into being like, I think I need this. I will donate four dollars towards your, towards your cookie jar. Do it. If you get it. Six bucks. On the, you won't find a better deal than Six that. Six bucks for this. Yeah. Well, with his four. And I start getting closer. And once you're you're close and you put your hands on it, you're kind of screwed. But before I even said anything, Ricky like already had his wallet out and he had some like loose dollars and he's like. I'll pay four dollars towards it. What the heck? <laughs> That's a bed rockin' price. There you go. So I'm like, I can walk away with this giant Fred Flintstones cookie jar, giant glass porcelain thing for six bucks. <laughs> I really want to see that in his room. That's why. Also, disclaimer now, I felt a little bad when I went home. I realized that thing literally sells all day. Like people pay for it. It sells all the time. For like 80 bucks, 60 bucks in Mercari. I'm not joking. 10 bucks? Ricky donated four of those dollars? This is what I call a, just a friendship of friends. Yabba dabba doo! Sorry, neighbor. Oh, he's right there. Now you look awkward. <laughs> he's looking at you now. What are you gonna keep in there now? Uh, probably ashes of people that I murdered. So I'll be in here in a couple months? Yeah, a couple months. <laughs> <laughs> Let me know. Almost broke. Hey, don't look at me like that, bro. I'm triggered and offended. <laughs> well, that's it for now. It was honestly an awesome night. Awesome day of picking. Why well, you gotta make fun of my hair, bro? I got good hair. That's what I'm saying. Look at this hair. It's fantastic. That's disgusting hair. 
<laughs> that, that's literally what it was. It was picking. It was like the Pickers show. Wow, it really was. I can't be the only one to ever notice that these containers look exactly like a Super Nintendo. That was good. It was good. Whoa, Inception. See you guys. Bye, Ricky. Bye. Well, well thank you. Well, thanks, guys. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for coming by. Have a good one. Yeah, you <laughs> Happy then. I heard that. So it's the next night after the epic major hunt that Ricky and I had and I had an offer up deal in the works that I didn't think would go through. I see this deal for this Genesis bundle that's almost too good to be true. It's a really good deal and basically I messaged this guy and he's like, hey, I'm down, let's do it and I'm like, oh shoot, I can't meet up right now. I actually can't go pick this stuff up right now on offer up. Can you please hold it for me? Nine times out of 10, it won't be held. Basically. He said he would hold it for me. Great, thankful, stoked. Then all of a sudden, three days go by, nothing. I've been ghosted. I've lost hope and then out of nowhere, I get a message from him. The poor guy got in a bike accident and literally wrecked his face and got stitches all across his face. I'm just happy the guy is okay. Literally got in a bike accident and got like stitches across his eye or something apparently. And he didn't even see the messages after he held them for me and removed them from offer up. And then he goes, hey, it's okay. I'm okay. I still held all this stuff for you. I'm like, holy cow, good people do exist. I fly out, not literally, like the Flintstones fly out, like <laughs> And I'm going down there because I'm ready to get this amazing Genesis deal because I'm on that Genesis journey. Next stop, speakers. Genesis. I'm driving, I'm really excited for this deal because it really is such a good deal. And the guy knows this too. I'm not ripping the guy off. He knows, he's like, I know what it's worth. I understand, I wanna be cool. He's not like a reseller. He's like, I'm just being cool with this. I even told him when he offered me a lower amount, I'm like, no, 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 I'm gonna pay you the full price of what you originally said. So this is awesome. I know I've been collecting a lot of Genesis stuff, but I haven't even picked up an actual Genesis yet. And this is part of, this lot and I'm excited because I've played Genesis recently like a lot of us have but I've been playing on emulators and it just I'm so excited to get back on a console and just play it plug into a little TV VCR combo and play it the way it was intended you know okay we're here I'm just waiting now outside of his apartment unit he said he's gonna bring it out any minute so I'm excited. I just got like more excited as I was thinking because I get to hook all this up and play now. So I'm here and I meet up with the guy, the awesome guy that held its stuff for me, a guy that I respect because nobody these days holds stuff for you when you know other people are offering higher numbers. What's up, man? How, hey, hey, appreciate it, dude. <laughs> hey, what are you doing? I appreciate How, it. How's your eye? It's all right. I'll actually show you. I know. I was going to have But I meet up with him and I'm just digging through the stuff. The guy goes, hey, I even took videos to show you that everything works. He's super nice, he's super yeah, cool, yeah. that it works and everything, so. I know, 15 minutes ago, just when you, I wanted to see. All right, so you got other stuff too. 
Yeah, I have a N64, PS3, Switch. He's got all the, you know, kind of everything too. I'm, I'm into the retro game. Got it. So this yeah. is your old stuff, just some of your old stuff. Yeah, exactly. And, and I'm digging one. through, and there's all this good stuff. There's boxed games, loose games, six button controllers, the Genesis Model 2. Everything's complete that has a box. Oh, in here. So we got a Sega Genesis Model 2, a whole bunch of loose games in here, Sonic and Knuckles, Sonic 3. Pac-Man 2. Some of the games that are in here, one that really sticks out to me is the Sega 6-Pack, which was released in June of 1995 and has some of Sega's most successful games from the console's first year. Helpful. I really like the 6-Pack too, because a lot of these games in here are actually pretty pricey if you buy them individually. So to get like Revenge of Shinobi, uh, Streets of Rage, Golden Axe, which is one of my, Golden Axe is probably like my favorite Genesis style. Right beat em up type game. Revolution X, which is basically a Aerosmith video game, and I know the arcade port is a much better video game. Revolution X, which is an Aerosmith video game. You throw CDs and all that, but on the Genesis version, funny enough, being an Aerosmith game, the worst thing about the game is probably the sound quality. I'll just be honest, but still really happy to have it. But it's still cool, still nostalgic. You shoot CDs and stuff like that. And amongst other things, my absolute favorite, the reason I picked this up was because of Double Dragon, The Shadow Falls. And that's because Double Dragon is a staple in my household, but this is different. But really, the one that caught me the most was Double Dragon, The Shadow Falls. not going to be your normal side-scrolling beat-em-up. No, it's a one-on-one -on -one fighting video game, and I used to play it all the time. One-on-one -on -one fighting game. I know the NES version, there was a fighting game as well, so this is really cool to get, man. For this one, to have that 16-bit sprites, I do love all the, the beat-em-up ones also, but to have the one-on-one -on -one fighting game, really cool, really happy, really thankful, dude. The fact that you held on to this for me, bro. Yeah, Box art on it looks really cool, too. I love the, the yellow that's on there as well. So to get this whole lot, Four. 30 bucks. I was like, dude, it's offer up. Right. right, right. I, I highly yeah, doubt. Time, yeah. He actually tried to make me pay 25 because he felt bad that he got in a bike accident. And I know you said, you're like, oh, I'll do 25. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was only charging 30. <laughs> yeah. And he was trying to get me to pay him 25 because I'm like, bro, you're, the, bad, yeah. you're the one who got in a bike accident. Don't feel mad. <laughs> Not gonna lie. I gave him $40 because I was like, dude, come on. You held it for me. It was way low. If anything, for me, I am gonna give you 40 because oh, I know well, I it's worth it. more. No, yeah, I, it's not even worth. I know it's worth even more than oh, that, I but I want yeah, I want to at least, you know. No, it, it, you're, it's like, be it's, cool. you know, offer up. It's uh, like, I want to be And then cool. to get this amazing Genesis score from such a cool dude with a unique story there as well that all worked out good in the end. Super cool of him to hold all of these for me, all of it for 30 bucks and everything works. I feel like for me, one of the greatest successes, successful weeks for us with the pursuit because it all just felt right. If you're a, a Super Nintendo kid like I was, you don't necessarily love the three button controllers. So these six buttoners, awesome. Thank you so much. What a rad, rad, rad guy. Riff told me to say goodbye again. Bye. Say it with a smile. <laughs> so that's it this time. Wonderful, wonderful time digging with Ricky, just having fun doing, I feel like, what we started the show for, just having fun as buddies, looking through a bunch of stuff, no real competition. Maybe. On this episode of Pawn Stars. I got a, I got a couple buddies who are in Pawn Stars. Really? Yeah. Is, is his name Chum Lee? No. Oh. Then they mean nothing to me. <laughs> grabbing whatever, laughing about things, collecting things we didn't even know we cared about, having fun. I love all of you. <laughs> that would, yeah. Wow, don't do that. The stars aligned, and now the power, that couldn't have worked out better. See you guys later. What's up, Gabe, let's see it, bro. Whoa. That was actually pretty. <laughs> I can't. Well, see you later. Go buy yourself a, a frappuccino. I don't know what you drink. Do it one more time, bro. <laughs> I'm worn out. I'm worn out. Ricky's son really talks loud. The Whittler on the roof. Garden Grove, Westminster. One of those two areas. Sometimes that's the way game chasing goes. Oh. It's 2020, bro. I can get you for anything. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Gabe. Beyond the professional. Right. Hey, where you been, bro, on the show? Oh, I've been skating a lot. What would you do if someone tried to cancel our show? I'd just laugh. Unprofessional. <laughs> <laughs>
Bye! Dang it, they're back. Nuclear! <laughs> That's what he says. You dig? I dig. That's the way the pursuit plays out. Bad. <laughs> 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 we knew you'd be coming. While we were filming, I kept calling the bushwhackers the Dudley boys for some weird reason. Rick, you know what a mantique is? No, what is it? I heard it in American Pickers. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Not putting that in the episode. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Maybe in honor of this, I will get an ice cream Sunday on the way home. Even though it's Wednesday. That's a really good movie. I don't know about the Hobbit though. <laughs> you just learned something from me. So now you're smarter. I remember when I met you and you were talking to me about The Rock, but like before he was talking, and you were like dead serious, and I thought you were joking. I was like, oh, I was really into wrestling. I really like you do the eyebrow thing? <laughs> Stupid thing. Except Ricky in a Speedo. That's a good sight. That is not a good sight. Well, I probably should. <laughs> there they are! No! You jerk! I don't even know what I threw away, but I kind of feel bad because it wasn't my stuff. You keep it going. Yep, this is awkward. Yep, this will make it into the part we all laugh. <laughs> <laughs> Do I need to shave? Mort? Mort, stop! Stop it! I'm poor. We're all poor. You got PlayStation time to school, though, you. <laughs> Brady! Brady, I see you, sir. Hey, that's not Brady. Oh yeah. Don't let Disney ruin Star Wars anymore. You guys keep it up, all right? I like what you did. Dig Streets of Rage is good too. Land Bator. <laughs> Son of a gun! All right, ah! <laughs> Always win me off with it. I watched Street Sharks today on VHS. It's completely hollow. It's like the Genesis speakers thing never happened. After the Genesis speakers, you're the Raphael. You're kind of a jerk. Sweet. I call Michelangelo for sure. Gabo, Krang. <laughs> I was gonna say Bebop. <laughs> Actually, him and Mikey, Bebop and Rocksteady. Oh my gosh, Gabo and Mikey are Bebop and Rocksteady. Wow.